I uh, <laughs> overheard a conversation at my bar in my town. I don't own the bar or own the town, but it's my town and my bar anyway. Uh, and I wasn't eavesdropping, but I just I listened in. It was a husband-wife couple, and they're middle-aged and they're maybe a little older. And they were talking about how their kid, uh, probably my age, maybe a little younger, definitely in his 30s, was still living at home and and uh, you know, it was sad, it kind of felt bad for him because their kid wasn't um, being independent. You know, at 32, 33, whatever, you're still living at home, it's pretty sad. And I, I could only glean, uh, yeah, glean, not glean, glean a certain amount of information uh, based on it, but they... <laughs> They bought the kid a freaking Beamer. They're, they're saying, like, well, we did everything that I'm summarizing it uh, simply, but they did all these things for this kid. They let him live at home. They got a nice place based on uh, uh, the, the bar that I go to. It's, it's a higher-end bar. Uh, they certainly weren't lacking in money based on their clothes and uh, uh, what they were ordering. Um, but they basically spoiled this kid rotten. And and I've, I've ran into this before, sometimes when I do the consulting, sometimes when I read... In newspaper articles uh, about rich parents and how their kids how do you get the kids out of the house I mean, you know, well here's the thing guys you don't give them the money uh, you know, I know I know that you uh, you want your kids to have a really great life and maybe you worked it up and you you've earned all that money and you you don't want your kids to go through that well that's the problem that will if you don't let them grow up like that uh, earning their own money, and you constantly shield them from the economic realities of life, they're never going to become independent, self-reliant adults. And I don't know why you guys can't see that. I mean, it's human nature to take the easy way. Hell, if my parents let me stay at home uh, up until my 30s, and they bought me a Beamer, and they gave me a spending, a spending account, that was, who, gets a, how did, who gets a spending account? I don't. Most of the people I know don't. But and then you wonder why they're not going out and doing it, or they, or they do really lame ass shit. Like, oh, they they uh, they go work for the nonprofit, or they're gonna start a band. That's that's my favorite. The trust fund babies always start bands or become artists because they're too damn lazy to do anything that requires advanced algebra. Heck, just regular algebra. So, they, and they, and then they produce the world's crappiest music and the world's crappiest art. And that's why you see ugly minimalist art in the modern day museums that anyone can make. But you need money and a parental spending account. So you could go pursue your art career, uh, but that doesn't resolve the problem that they're still dependent on you. So I have come up with a solution for all you rich parents um, who who have a problem with your child uh, not being independent, you're, you're the adult child still there. Um, give me the money instead, okay? Uh, starting, I'll tell you a little story. When I was seven, second grade, no, maybe eight, it was the third grade, third grade. Uh, my old man uh, moved up to Michigan. We'd go visit him during summers. Now, we were poor. My dad was a pastor. He said, the Lord will provide. Bullshit, he'll provide. you got to go provide for yourself. So, uh, back then, I think it's still the same today. So, there's a story about inflation. You get a, a dime for every can or bottle. Sometimes you get 20 cents for the big 40-ounce uh, uh, beer bottles. Those were, those were good. Those were twofers. Uh, but there was no allowance. There was no money. So I had to get, if I wanted candy or something, I had to go and do it. So I, I would go dumpster diving. I'd go to the beach on Lake Michigan and, and haul as many bottles and, and cans as I could to the point I earned about 120 bucks in one summer. All right, that was the third grade. My next job, I'm not, not trying to be crass, but I was a shit shoveler. That's what I did. I worked at a landscaping firm, or greenhouse rather, and a massive one. They, and they, they supplied all of Milwaukee. Um, with the poinsettias and the stuff you see in the grocery stores and stuff like that. Well, different types of plants have different types of uh, nutritional properties uh, or, or chemicals in the soil. So you would, we would mix. We'd mi there was the list that showed you what percent sheep shit, what percent dog, uh, not dog, horse shit. I mean, it was everything. Every type of manure, styrofoam, gravel, and, and peat moss and all that. Um, that was my na and that was in the seventh grade. Uh, then security, I mean... You, it, you know, there are people like me uh, who actually learn self-reliance and independence at a very early age and are a hell of a lot more deserving than your little spoiled brat. So, you know, I got, or seriously, deadly serious, go to my website, click on the donate. You got problem with your kid because your kid's 35 and he or she's still living at home and they're, they're uh, uh, you know, or worse. Oh, gosh, this is even worse. You, you handed them the keys to the business and they ran it into the ground. 
Uh, that was very common in some small little community banks here in Minnesota where, wow, look, the same last name, and wow, is that even more red ink they're spilling? And then you wonder, you know, well, they never had any trials or tribulations to know, let alone how to be an independent adult, but let alone how to run a business. So give us the money instead, okay? Go, go find some kid who's suffering and trying to get through college. Take the money you would have given to your kid and give it to that person instead. That person not only will put it to better use and appreciate it much more and you help them out a lot, your kid will start to be forced to grow up, kid. 32-year-old adult still living at home. You Here's a Beamer, kid. <laughs> so I don't, you know, it, it's up to you. I'm just trying to help. I'm certainly not doing it for myself. That'd be horrible if some rich billionaire all of a sudden took pity on me and then cut me a check and then then a lot of problems would go away. That'd be really, that, that'd never happen though. It, it, it'd be cool, you know, to make the story. Ah. Stupid blogging kid who shoveled shit back in the 80s. So, but in any case, uh, more seriously, for you upper income folk, your kids aren't going to go away if you leave them that option. You got to push them out of the nest. You got to cut them off. You know, leave them an inheritance that they got to work their way up and they can't get, you know, a trust fund. Get a, Look into trust funds. You could talk to your local lawyer or accountant about that. And they cannot, uh, the, they'd be the designated beneficiary, but uh, they couldn't get it until they're like 50 or something and proven themselves. So, in any case, just please stop complaining about your rich, spoiled kid when you're the one spoiling them. That's all. Toodles.